Hey, everybody. Hope you're tied on. We're back at it. Kicking off a new racing week this summer meet here at Gulfstream Park. Ron Nicoletti, Jason Blewett joining you a little after 12 noon on this Thursday, July the 18th, my friend. We're moving right along, aren't we? Moving right along. Uh, before you know it, it'll be uh, the championship meet just down the right. road. <laughs> That's how fast it seems it's going. And this is a little bit of a swan song for you. Uh, Pete will be joining me on the show between tomorrow through Sunday. You'll be taking a little time away. You and your wife, Linda Nicoletti, heading up north. No trip to Saratoga, though, this this go-round, right? Not this go-round. Heading to Vermont and Montreal this time. Do a little bike riding. All right. Sounds good. Bring I hope back a Canadian's jersey, <laughs> would you? Good day, eh? Yeah, so I can burn it here in the, <laughs> uh, in the studio. Anyway, let's get down to business. It is a nine race a Thursday afternoon. Some nice weather here for this time of the year in South Florida. Certainly the way the forecast looks up and down the East Coast. This might be the coolest place this coming weekend. But how good has Levy Land been as she looks for her hat trick in the second? Just been incredible. She's winning by open lens. She looks like a, a major player in there. And uh, really good weather, as you mentioned today. Nine race uh, Thursday. And the Rainbow Six is starting to build. Indeed it is. We'll just take a look at the, uh, the outside conditions at our window here in our third floor clubhouse studios with Pegasus Park and the mighty Pegasus in the background. Partly sunny skies again temperature of about 85 degrees and that rainbow six carryover about a hundred fourteen thousand dollars do note we have four turf races today and in fact the turf rail set at 108 feet let's get down to business ronnie boy a good card coming up a good card and like you said levy land i'm sure do you have that horse singled in your early pick -up? i did not single <laughs> levy land i do feel leilani is going to run pretty yeah. well that horse uh, very dangerous from the inside post too deep to start in fact in both halves of the early double using the one onyx and the number five extravagant Rosie in this upcoming Thursday first in which there is some guesswork to be in be involved to be fair things in a, a six horse cast my single Ronnie not in the second it's a race later in the third I think that is the spot for the two gump maybe just wire to wire after facing eons better in the maiden ranks yeah this one a distant third at this distance of before but in the in reality yeah so right that was, that's way better than the spot yeah there's no well-defined or guard <laughs> and ties with all due respect in the cast of today's third race nice twelve dollar play to start off the new week and in fact as we go forward we have a twilight friday here tomorrow and then a dozen races on saturday and a good looking stake in which leading trainer Safi joseph jr is very much a part of the conversation but that's down the line let's talk about this upcoming first race again four on the grass this afternoon down to a field of six starting the action with a two-year-old philly fifty thousand dollar maiden claimer uh turf debuts galore in this race Ronnie I ultimately went to a horse starting for the third time by dialed in on the rail the one onyx over your top pick I feel as though when it's all said and done most are going to be one five or five one in this race yeah five extravagant Rosie half sister to five time turf winner in grade one stakes place extravagant kid is debuting on turf failed to show much that was her state bred special weight debut going five and a half on the turf I just feel that this horse was bred to run on yep. the turf good connections as you know Mondo de la Serta Edgar that was my thought mm -hmm. process I can understand Understand the one Onyx uh, uh, the uh, Arendelle had two horses in. They scratched Sweden, so it looks like Onyx might be the right one. Here. And could be just the inside speed, and we'll try to likely wire the field from the rail beneath the Misael Jaramillo. You also get the Treasure Beach factor with Extravagant Rosie on the sire side. Let's move on to the second. There's a little more form. In fact, quite a bit more form to dive into in this upcoming back end to Thursday's early double as we have the uh, first of five today over the main track, and we do so with Levy Land. We don't have the replay. I didn't pull the replay play of hers because I mean even looking at her last two there's not much to look at per se other than her basically winning in two complete 
Gallup dominant efforts. What do you think of her coming back for Georgie Delgado? Well, that was what I was going to show you. Stand on Jorge, Jorge Delgado. First half to claim all levels in the dirt just over the past year. What a year he's been having. He's 8 for 20, 40 percent, 65 percent in the money, 256 is the return investment. This is a nice horse. So he mm -hmm. jumps in and gets it. And, and who knows where this horse is going to land. We'll say it that way today. But this is a nice horse. Could make it three in a row. Yeah, I think she's going to make it three in a row. But at some point, I also think she's going to face a pretty stiff challenge from the one Leilani, who's coming out of a very good effort here in the slop. And here's a race we'll bring you, in fact, right around Belmont's stakes time on uh, on June 7th, a little more than a month and change ago. She had legit trouble early on. She's in the green and white, the Arendelle silks. She'll steady out and lose position that was starting to dwindle. She was having a hard time keeping up between. She's out of the race. I was pretty impressed though with this steady advance now do keep in mind an extremely messy sloppy track she's taking all that kickback and although she is a 12 race veteran now she showed quite a bit of poise i thought splitting horses and coming on gamely at the end i ultimately feel ronnie as well she might appreciate getting a little more real estate to play with today as this race was at six and a half and she's obviously going a furlong and a half further this afternoon yeah and then just a good performance as you saw there after that you know having trouble in the beginning so stretching out you know the daughter of brethren should be able to handle a mile distance and we welcome back jockey ray lu gutierrez who was a finalist to be champion uh, apprentice jockey in 2018. I mean, he first made a name for himself here about a year ago, and it looks like he's going to give Gulfstream full time now uh, a, a run with Matt Musiker as his agent. Well, let's hope he is, because he said that before, and then he headed out of town again, but he's a good rider, so glad to have him back here in the colony. Yeah, no doubt. A very young colony at yeah. that. I mean, Amisael might be around my age and mm -hmm. is one of the older dogs, but it is mostly early to mid 20s out there and a number of talented riders. Let's move on to the uh, third. We go with six. We stretch out on the main. We haven't had too many of these mile and a 16th races on the dirt lately. It's nice to see one here in the maiden special weight ranks, even if this race is won by the likely favorite, who I singled in my early pick five, and we both picked. I mean, this is, considering who the two gump has faced, Frosted Grace, well-defined. I mean, this horse has tangled with some legitimately solid maidens in the past. Yeah, and stretching out to the mile in the 16, return from about an eight-month layoff to finish the fourth going six furlongs. think that sets this horse up perfectly. Stanley Gold, Jeffrey Sanchez in the orange this afternoon. And certainly Gump looks like the one to beat. Now, the race for second is really interesting because it's a real hodgepodge. A number of these horses, in fact, filling out the field. you got the one quality special who was over 50 to 1 here during the championship meet. That one's debut. And then towards the outside, even the five undaunted, who seems to be perhaps getting a little better. Is this horse maybe still on the improve? You know, he's a half to that uh, stakes place, Noble Drama, who ran well on the dirt up at Tampa. Going back to the main track, he hit the board in two or four route races on the turf. So I looked at that race at Tampa, and after Gump, like you said, it gets a little light in here. Yeah. I thought maybe on Daunting and Sweet Giant, Edgar Zayas for that first-time starter being a son of Giants Causeway. Maybe it's just easy as a first-time starter, but, you know, giving Gump up some uh, trouble in this spot. No, and that's a very important rider change yeah. there. Edgar was not originally named on that firster by Giants Causeway for our friend Juan Avi, who continues to do a good job. As we take a little time out, we'll talk to Marastronic 5, a little Rainbow 6, and a lot more after this.
already mid-July as we get back back to it here on this uh, live Thursday edition of Gulfstream Today. Ronnie and Jason, we've got some Stronic 5 chatter. Ronnie, you'll be uh, on a plane <laughs> maybe watching the Stronic 5 on your Express Bet app, I hope. I dwell, I handicapped it, so I, it's oh, my selections. Right. I'm yeah. part of I'm still I did my job because we drew, of course, a couple of days ago. So I have a vested interest, and I'm going to have a monetary interest in this thing. So And it kicks off. I, and I like this the way it's been. Yeah, I mean, me it's too. only two tracks with the two from Laurel and three in a row from Gulfstream. Sort of interesting. I mean, it's always good to have the California tracks mm -hmm. in, but this has been okay. And no racing at Laurel Park this Saturday mm -hmm. with that expected heat wave up throughout the mid-Atlantic into the Big Apple. But we will have Laurel running tomorrow for the Stronic 5 on that July 19th program. We'll set sail at about 5 to 5 Eastern, wrapping it up a little, little after 6.30 here at Gulfstream Park. Do note our first post here tomorrow. It's a 10-race Twilight Friday, so first post is 2 p.m. to 05 p.m., a little earlier than it's been at that uh, original 215. Rainbow Six, meanwhile, Ronnie, we hit six figures over the weekend as far as the carryover. We got 113K plus, and you're up on deck, my friend, with your ticket. I got a $38.40 ticket. I went too deep in here with Derlin and Miss Mario in the opening leg in here. My best bet today, and I don't know how much, uh, you know, how much money you're going to get on this. I really like Fine Spirit making his first start spit a pair of next out winners. Uh, Leo Spurrow Jr. doesn't start a lot of horses, but he does a good job. I went too deep in there. Race six had me confused along with race number eight. I, I went four deep in there. I, I didn't know what to do. In the ninth race today, really have a long shot. And if this one hits the board, I might knock everybody out. And that's mm -hmm. Moon over Maui. This one, 12 to 1 in the morning line, was 70 to 1 last time out. Ooh. But didn't run that badly. So I just and had a bad, bad break. Maybe that horse can grab a share in here. 3840 for me. And we'll see how this thing plays out. And that number two in the ninth race is your bomber there, yeah, Moon over Maui. Yeah, yeah. The other horse that you have yeah, that I'm mentioning is the six yeah, piece because yeah, right. I like that horse. Yeah, yeah, he's and I'll be curious to see. I saw Jay, I think, made Anumati favored yeah. there. I'll be curious to see ultimately what price peacefully is. He ran a giant yeah. race last time out. So race will bring you in just a few moments here on the show. But let's talk about the opening leg, of course, of today's Rainbow Six. Uh, the races two through five, by the way, or three through five, are on the dirt, and we continue on the main here with this three and up Billy Amer 6250 claimer, in which we had a very important early scratch of the two Sling and Sammy B. With her out, I scratch in the four Miss Mario, who's coming in off a win against Easier. Yeah, and for me, I scratched into the eight Durlin, who moved to the Andy Williams barn after that claim posted a lifetime best buyer of 82 when she defeated older horses. Not only did she defeat them, she won it by nine. Nine and a half lengths. She's the only three-time winner in the field. Wesley Henry at the control. So not top uh, named uh, trainer or, or jockey. May help your horse, price a little bit. This horse ran exceptionally well. Miss Mario, for all the reasons you mentioned, stepping up. Uh, uh, you know, I moved that one up, too, with the stretch. I, I like slinging Sammy B today. No, I liked her as well. Derlin's the real story of the race right. because her last out effort, I mean, that where to come from came up insanely fast and was claimed out of that out of that one by a bar and that what has only started eight horses on That's the right, year yeah. and uh, still looking for their first win so yeah she is no doubt the wild card and the uh, centerpiece if you will in the uh, fourth race now we're back on the turf for the fifth i misspoke a few seconds earlier races two through four consecutively are on the dirt our second of four turf races today goes in the fifth a uh, a 20k made in claimer for three and up that does jump start that third Thursday late pick five, and there is a peacefully uh, holding it down for me in the uh, nightcap. I do like that horse in the uh, last race, uh, going out for trainer Marcus Vitale quite a bit. Very competitive eighth race, though, and even seventh race. What do you do with a horse like High Hours, my friend, who's running a <laughs> bit later in the afternoon and is dropping down? It almost seems like in race number seven, uh, Ralph Nix and perhaps Team Valor are looking to get this horse claimed away. Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, it's a little tough in there. And, uh, dropping from 35 down. I mean, that's the logical one, but uh, did not single in that race. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, me neither, for sure. Now, the uh, fifth race to start this thing out, I'm three deep, two, five, and eight, but I do have your, your top selection, Ronnie, first as well, the number five, Fine Spirit, who caught, for this level, caught a maiden 20 field that would be 
tough during the winter time, tough at Saratoga. This horse comes out of a monster good race. Yeah, and this one making its first start since splitting a pair of those next out winners when finishing second. As you mentioned, uh, trainer Leo Spur Jr., Miguel Vasquez atop, this son of Noble Mission. I just thought off that race, split a couple of next out winners. In this particular spot, was the one to beat. I used Tor Toronto in second and Blue Sky Kitten of underneath, but I, I didn't just single fine spirit because I thought maybe Toronto had a bit of a shot in here. Yeah, Toronto's run fine despite being 0 for 11, as has the uh, 0 for 9 Blue Sky Kitten, who's back on his best surface today. He's a better turf horse than dirt, and he got rained off last time out, and he's got speed as well from a good post with Edgar Zayas. We've also got Marcus Vitali, who runs my single in the nightcap peacefully for drawing away, and he's got a new drawing away horse here off the claim. Now, these are the Ramsey colors you're about to see first time out with this somewhat belated career debut keep in mind Cantrup Kitten a four year old and he ran here July 5th wanted to show his start because not that he broke awfully or anything like that but he was just a little lethargic early and clearly a horse in the early speed department had none of it he finishes up with some interest as we pick it up at the quarter pole he'll start to weave his way through some tired horses never threatens the winner who essentially ran off the screen but all in all i think ronnie this was a good enough race to potentially get him going for his second start this afternoon. Yeah, this is the one that, that I could not figure out what to do. I, I went from putting this horse second, mm -hmm. third, then I ended up going fourth. I would not be surprised if he runs good and, and even wins the race because uh, just the connections and really lost its best chance when it broke poorly there. But I, I just was hung up on fine spirit, and that's why I went that way. Let's move on to the sixth here. Five down, four to go as we uh, volley back to the dirt. Coming up on this two-lifetime three and up Philly Mayor uh, claiming race in which I looked at for a while and you do have a big field I mean that may complicate matters do I love anybody here probably not I wound up going to the three Alex babe who's second time out this meet for trainer Ian Hemingway over the five and she seems to be the common link with you and I least highly rated the number five Papa's girl yes yeah, this one changing barns going to the Emmett Jolly barn after the claim track the pace finished third behind the horse we were talking about earlier slinging Sammy B at a mile last time out but they scratched that that horse early in the day. I was going to key, see how that horse ran in there, but Papa's girl, if 13 mm -hmm. was not the 13, mm -hmm. this horse would be on top of my ticket. Drop it to this level on the dirt, broke from that, breaking from, as I mentioned, post three, followed her monster maiden victory in the slop, comes back, runs six, is 31 to one at a mile in the 16th on the turf, but it's Bobby DeBona, Sammy Camacho, they've been on fire. Yep. This post, I had to put this horse on the ticket, yep. but boy, it's good, tough to win for post 13 going in one turn mile. Yeah, you do move in. There's no one <laughs> captured angel, so it's post 12. But again, good thing you got a lengthy run into that, into that, uh, into the far turn. But boy, oh boy, 12, uh, <laughs> stall 12 there, uh, breaking from the outside for a barn that's been in fuego, man. Four oh. for five to start the summer meet for uh, Bob the Bona. Let's move on to the uh, seventh as we uh, get back on the turf. 16K three and up claimers and a race that, although you've got some size, just in terms of the number of horses entered it really is all about the runner we picked who's going to be favored here in the nine high hours yeah there's been some fits and starts with this uh, brazilian bred now eight-year-old who's only run 17 times over the last couple of seasons but judging from his last race and here it is on june 6th you would think he's still got enough prerequisite talent to maybe compete and perhaps win at a level higher than $16,000 claiming. We got he got loose, but he was cut down by a horse in good form in the Gipper. In for the 16, Ronnie boy. I think he gets claimed this afternoon. He gets claimed. He's dropping to that level. You know, yeah, you'll see right here, he finishes a good second and gets 35 condition claimers. So right away, you're saying, what is going on here? It's Ralph Nix, MSC Al Jaramillo. Maybe he hit it just being an eight-year-old. If you want him for 16, you mm -hmm. can have him, and they can get a win here. I uh, use he very colorful in second, who's the five. Stepping up in competition. With I thought this horse would sit the trip with the speed in this race. So I just thought maybe this horse can get a little bit of a trip maybe grab a share in there along with Giants Voice. And as far as speed, swagger, earth, you've got the nine high hours who's very fast. Yeah, there might be a contested mm -hmm. pace for sure. If that happens, I thought the four blackjack baby, who at one time had turned into a wind machine and the going got a little too tough for him. He seems a little inconsistent, but I still think he's got enough going on here, sprinting on the turf, that he could run well. I'm 9-4, Ronnie 9-5 as we approach race number eight. Our dirt finale on this Thursday, July 18th, 25 
a twenty thousand dollar three it up claimers in which what are you four deep here yeah, in your four, rainbow six yeah and i i did i did not i had the seven further down and then i went back and looked and i said you know i'm gonna put this seven on, on the ticket here but i did go with the horse you have in second and that's drop kick uh, on top of my ticket return from the layoff stretching out to mile responded in the first race after the claim by yvonne belsor third place finish against similar competition i thought going three quarters back on may 10th so stop and go stop and go zippy paint this boy and the horse you have on top yeah that's the seven gray bow who's the elder statesman here the nine-year-old who's won eight prior races it's the drop in class i know he's been a little camera shy the last uh, year and change if not a little further than that consistently though he's been in some very difficult open tough allowance optional claiming races not that this race is a layup but i like some class relief for this old warrior going out for trainer john vinson and it's funny just looking you're very <laughs> much inside i'm kind of all <laughs> over the place more mid-pack to the outside we both like drop kick is zippy gonna try to wire the field well listen this one turn it back to a mile if, uh, and try and condition claimers today after facing the likes of hard knock and vincero Graded stakes place, Jalen Journey, and a pair of recent 16 optional claimers. Leo Gabriel doesn't start many horses. He does an excellent job. This one has that tactical ability. Mm -hmm. I just thought this one was flatted by the uh, past company lines. Yeah. You know, Jalen Journey, Vincero is one of the hard-knocking horses here. A and I really respect the job that Leo Gabriel does. And paint his boy, now in the Kendall Condi barn. I don't really know who that is right now. The Cole cuts back to mile. Strong performances in the slop. So this is wide open now. That's mm -hmm. why I went four deep. All right, drop kick uh, again. Our uh, our link there <laughs> seven three Ronnie three one. You've got some speed with Zippy. We'll see ultimately if the pace plays out. Maybe a little Zippy and Empire power. But I like the nine year old there dropping down. And clearly we both feel as though peacefully is going to run a uh, a solid race here in the nightcap as we come up on Thursday's finale. Three and up Philly Mare twenty k maiden claimer at five furlongs over the turf and had mentioned uh, peacefully as my. Uh, late pick five single and one of only two horses that you have my friend in your rainbow six check out this effort last time out running for the same made in 20 tag this Philly by Cantharos will race for this afternoon I mean she just had no time to do anything up and about vying between now she'll slip through down inside as they make the bend and 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 hit the top of the stretch I love that she never backed down and she fought basically eye to eye every step of the way in a very good second time out defeat here for Marcus off the claim. Yeah, Marcus says she ran very well, and she, like I said, I had a long shot in there, but this looks like the horse to beat, and, and you know, I just thought Marcus, I, I said, well, second after the claim, we know what he does first after the claim, so we'll, we'll look it up, we'll show you when this race ends about Marcus. Uh, and and she doesn't want to give an inch no. there, you know? I mean, she did not want to slow down, she did not want to back up. I was just really impressed with her basically fending off everybody, and we know Marcus, again, claims quite a bit picked up drawing away stable this past winter and what do you got for us with this second off the claim well second off the claim all levels on the turf which i wanted to look up he's pretty solid 19 percent, 51 percent in the money and still a positive return of investments of two dollars and 60 cents so there you see marcus i don't know who the lady is in the picture but uh shadowing <laughs> but there's marcus and i just thought this horse is good you know the one to beat in the nightcap i mentioned Ma moon over maui hoping to get away from the gate last time i went back and looked he bumped, he checked, he broke slowly. He was 70 to 1. The barn has not won this year. You know, Miguel Vasquez jumps aboard. Big that rider change. Yeah, that's what intrigued mm -hmm. me in this race. And I just thought if you're looking for a bomber in this race, and I think this one is 12 to 1 in the morning line, could go off at 20 to 1. I not, wouldn't be shocked. Now, the two beating the odds, I guess we'll mention this horse. In yeah. fact, she needs to be mentioned because, I mean, she was a first out Jason Service horse that didn't get bet all that much here. Back in early April, post championship meet, I think that's a worth worthwhile distinction when she debuted for 35. She's in a way a ball of contradictions because she was rained off the turf. She's got a turf pedigree. I just don't know if the drop for Calabrese is just what Calabrese does or is this a bit of a trap smokescreen where they claimed 
kind of a lemon off service for a lot more money than what she's running for today. Well, this is definitely a Calabrese drop. This is what they do. But this one going to Safi's Bond, Chase the Pace, as you mentioned, in a 35 debut. It was in the uh, sloppy track last time out. Looks like a good spot for this horse. I'm still leaning towards peacefully there, beating yards. And if you're looking for the bomber, like I said, moon over Maui. But uh, I, I think uh, you singling here is okay. You know, mm -hmm. I think that horse can run that well in there. But uh, we'll see if we can get some uh, try and super action with the two in the six. All right, sounds good. I think Anu Maddie's the morning line favorite. And clearly on the drop, she is a major player. And in a way, has run the fastest turf races. I'd like to see her. My main potential question with her, can she go five on the turf? What price is she I'm in the last? Flip on through. Race five number to nine. Two. You got her at two and a half, peacefully at four and beating the odds at three. And then what was your long shot? 12. 12, yeah. Little Miguel V. Magic. <laughs> I hope so. Let's hope so, my friend. Grew up in Panama. Terrific journeyman rider, much like our man. Coming up next, not born in Panama, the one and only Pete Aiello. <laughs> Somewhere in Florida, he's got your Thursday scratches and changes in a moment. The best chance for success begins with a solid foundation. At Hardacre Farm, early personal one-on-one -on -one care starts the journey to becoming a champion. Bred to leading stallions, our mares represent the highest standards, Hardacre Farm's signature in the breeding industry. Based in Ocala, Florida, breeder and owner Amy Tarrant has inspired excellence throughout her entire career. In your quest for success, start with Hardacre Farm, breeding the champions of tomorrow.